All right, so I have a business, a lot of moving parts. How do I know what to protect and what not to protect? Well, first, hopefully you've taken inventory on what you have. Uh, you can't protect what you don't know what you have. And hopefully you know where your assets are located and you've done some sort of a risk assessment on um, what assets are critical and which ones are not um, to support the functions, the, the, op the sustain the operational side of, of the business. Um, and then you're communicating with your IT department to understand what their strategy is in protecting those assets and what those threat vectors or vulnerabilities are against um, the technology um, that you've deployed or technology that you're using. Um, and then you, in, you make that part of a cybersecurity strategy um, in which you are doing a constant assessment of the program to, to determine if it's non-existent or if it's compliant based only. If you're in one of those two categories, you ought to shift your paradigm and make cybersecurity more inclusive in the organization um, because everyone in an organization has a role in cyber or plays a role in cyber rather and should know what that role is. And so there's a component of um, a human element there in making sure that you've got a workforce that's trained, everyone from the receptionist to your most technical um, person, you know, managing managing the environment on your behalf. So, so in that case, so uh, an email comes in, you're, you guys are training them saying, hey, I know this email looks good, I know we've told you to move fast, but we need you to look at this email a little bit more thoroughly to make sure that it's actually not from XYZ business. There's a character off, so you go, they go through that kind of training to make sure absolutely, not to do that? Absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you can outsource that type of training. There are um, third-party entities that provide um, phishing training mm -hmm. um, to an organization where it is a custom-made phishing email. And so the goal is to launch the first one and not, not now announce that you're launching it um, to sort of determine, do we really have a significant problem here? Or where are our target areas? What was the user behavior um, that initiated the, the fake attack. So you're kind of testing your current staff to see how good or bad they are at opportunities for a hack? Absolutely, absolutely, and that's critical um, because a lot of uh, cybersecurity attacks um, require human, a human action to trigger it. So malicious software, um, certainly that's how ransomware happens um, or a Trojan happens all across the network. Um, and that gives an, an attacker an advantage uh, if it's ransomware, that's an immediate um, result that you'll feel um, because you won't be able to access your systems. But if it's something that's lying dormant um, over time, a cyber criminal or an attacker could lie um, undetected in an environment and start to move laterally in the environment and start to steal data without, in small, small chunks, that's what we saw with the Sony breach. Um, and then if, you're not, if your IT team is not paying attention or you don't have the proper tools monitoring um, the environmental behavior, um, then you may not catch it until it's too late. Mm, great stuff. Thank you. You're welcome.